Chapter 10. Love. Are the primary commandment. First Bible lesson, John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 22 verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Total surrendering. Beloved, from now till eternity, we will not talk about any other person but our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so, because he alone loves God, and in him lies the hope for the world's salvation. He is the only one who has taught us the truth, and our lives depend on him. The first lesson reads that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. The problem of the entire world stems from the fact that you do not hear the word of God, and you neither accept it nor practice it. If people of the world had loved God with all their hearts and minds, and above all, believed and seen him, as the only hope for man's salvation, we would not have lamented, experienced lack, or have any problem at all. If we had sanctified our heart, refrained from sins and practiced his divine teachings we shall abide in peace. A lot of people may not have realized that the attendant rewards derivable from practicing the word of God is far more valuable than one person owing the whole world. After all, his word is more than the whole world. You have been enjoying us, this is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you, John chapter 15 verse 12. Brotherhood of the cross and star is actually the real kingdom of God you have been hearing about. We shall continue to preach love to you at all times. When you have this love richly endowed in you then you would not commit sin, and you would be perfect and pure, as he is. And above all, you would be saved. If you listen to, assimilate, accept and put to practice all that you have been taught about the kingdom of God, I am convinced that the world will be problem free. And in addition, peace will return to the world. It is through a perfect heart that you can practice righteousness. Mercy comes from the mind, patience, love, humility, benevolence, honesty, obedience and all virtues are the function of the mind. Even truth is a fruit of the heart. And so, if one's state of mind is negative nothing good can ever come from such a man. This accounts for why our Lord Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 to 35. And so you would realize that loving God with all our hearts, minds and lives is nothing to toil with, if we must be joy heirs in the kingdom of God. If we are rich in righteousness we would behold God in our lives and we would not have time to commit all sorts sinful acts. Ipso facto, we would spend all our times and lives in doing the work of God. For Christ said, He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. John chapter 12 verse 48. Let us abide in the love of God. And if we allow this love to dwell in us it will be our amour. In so doing we would not commit sin. I am revealing to you in clear terms that the problem of the whole world emanates from the fact that the world has rejected the one that has come to lead mankind, among other creation of God, to the perfect knowledge of truth. Wife, children, husband, money, houses, cars, jewels, position, academic qualification, clothing etc., as you often say are not the problem of the world. The problems of the world are traceable to the fact that you have blindly refused to heed God's instructions. He has brought grace, salvation, life, health, mercy, truth, love, goodness and all virtues of God to mankind. But unfortunately, we do not want these things, instead we relish in wallowing in vices all life long. A local adage has it that the first person who goes to the stream at dawn fetches the cleanest water. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God. He knows God and loves him. Hence, he advises us to love God with all our hearts, minds and souls. And right now, as many as those who practice these words are saved. It was for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. If indeed we reject his teaching, where do we go from here? 
First look at what is happening in the world today. What do you think is the cause? Recall that our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples why they called him Lord when they did not keep his words. Let us start now to practice his words, bearing in mind that if we reject him we have rejected our lives. Do not be boastful of anything either in the west, east, and north or south, rather rejoice that you have practiced his word. Life cannot be gotten from the north, south, east or west. In God do we have life, and without him we are perished. Our Lord Jesus Christ brings grace, mercy, truth etc. to us. All the earthly things cannot save you. The only shortcut to your salvation is to accept him, practice his word, which is love, and teach others so to do. Do not preoccupy your mind with any frivolous thing other than to practice the word of God. You have to love him with all your mind, heart, life and indeed soul. For bringing grace and truth to us, we have to appreciate his love for mankind by giving him our selfless service. How can you do this? There is no way you can go about loving God with all your heart, mind and soul, unless your heart is pure. Good enough, the Bible discloses to us that, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. People die, because they lack this true perception. After all, no one that has seen God ever dies. He can never die. God brought you into this kingdom, but the fact that you still wallow in sins and do not practice his word, that is, why you cannot see him. Except you love God with a leaven your mind, heart, soul and indeed all your life. You cannot have life. You have no share in the kingdom of God. After all, what does it cost you to love God selflessly? You only stand to be rewarded bountifully and in addition, all your problems will cease. All you will see is God and his blessings will be showered on you. And you will not hear nor take advice from anybody apart from him. This is so, because, you have seen him face to face. And you will have peace, life, love and all good things in abundance. If you are rich in love, you would only think and practice love and nothing more. One is enslaved to what he loves best. If you love God alone, you would not have anything to do with sins. We would take him as everything to us. He is grace and truth. Anyone who loves God with all his heart, mind and soul has no problem whatsoever. Such a person too does not bother about how, where and when to see God, for he has God lavishly in him. Such a person does not lack anything, because he is the embodiment of all needs. Read our first lesson. First Bible lesson, John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The age of grace. Beloved, do you not see the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ brought for us love, life, power, truth among other virtues? This is so, because Moses had condemned the world, but Christ came and salvaged mankind by sacrificing his dear life. Was it not for this reason that Peter asked Christ the number of times which he could be offended and still forgive the person? In his answer, Christ told him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but, until seventy times seven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 22. Since our Lord Jesus Christ condemned both the counting of sins on people and hatred but advised people to embrace the love of God, it means he was one with God. It was because of this that he conquered every adversity at ease. You may have heard that right from the inception of the world, only our Lord Jesus Christ has seen God. He is the only one that has remained in God's bosom and also revealed God to mankind. The story that Moses, Abraham, Jacob and the rest of such prophets saw God is a fallacious statement. This is because such a story has no element of truth. But it is true that Christ saw God because he loved God with all his mind, heart and soul. The instruction that we all should love God with all our heart, mind and soul is from God. Therefore, it is imperative that we practice same should we desire to be blessed. You are asked to practice this and see if it would not work. Do you not know that, it was, as a result of Christ's interest and love for the Father that, he always called on him? Also remember, that, when Philip asked him to show them the Father, he said, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works, John chapter 14 verses 9 and 10. 
It does not cost us anything to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Our Lord Jesus Christ knew the essence of loving God wholeheartedly, hence, he strongly enjoined us to practice same. In fact, it was, as a result of Christ's total love for God that he did not encounter any problem. He does not only live forever, but also successfully hands over all that the Father had given to him to us. But it is really pathetic, as we have left such goodness and gone to embrace evil. The parable illustrated by Christ in Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you, is solely about us. This is, because we have rejected his teachings, which would have solved our problems to embrace wrong ideas, and values and that constitute our problems. This is a demonstration of the fact that the pearl has been thrown to the swine. You have been sending diverse requests to God but how many of you have loved him wholeheartedly? God is not in money, house, cars etc, rather he is in your heart. And you would be made whole, if you should love him wholeheartedly. Have you not heard what Christ said to Philip? He said, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. John chapter 14 verse 11. Once you accept God wholeheartedly and believe in him, he will dwell in you and you would feel his existence in you. You would also have his bountiful joy. Having been told of the importance of loving God wholeheartedly, it is imperative that you turn a new leaf, and imbibe the culture of love. You should, from this moment, start to cultivate the love of God in you. It is mandatory for all to love God wholeheartedly, by so doing, nothing would hurt us. When the Pharisees demanded Christ to show them how the kingdom of God is, he replied them thus, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke chapter 17 verse 21. Most of you request God to bless you with money to enable you serve him diligently. You want to get money to help you buy motor cars and build houses for him. But this is just the secondary aspect of it all, but the primary aspect, which you ought to do, is to love him, God, with all your heart, mind and soul. God needs nothing apart from a holy and spotless heart. If you have such purity of heart, for sure, you will see him. One of our spiritual choruses says, if your heart is pure, I will make it my abode. Therefore, if your heart is pure, certainly, he will come in and live in you. It is only there and then you will be able to see him instead of ghost, witches, juju, mermaid etc. In fact, should God dwell in you, you would be completely free from trouble. So, there is need to have a pure heart that is fit for God to live in. The Bible has it that, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Titus chapter 1 verse 15. You all have been commissioned to go into the world and teach this particular injunction to the people of the world. And if you and they practice this injunction, the joy of God would be yours. The injunction does not come from anyone here on earth or beneath the earth. It is from the Almighty Father. It is only when we practice these teachings that we will know the source of the teaching. This gospel constitutes the key to knowing God and being with Him. Therefore, stop seeking for God in different parts of the world, instead, love him wholeheartedly, and be pure, for you will see him at will. By so doing, you are saved. Read our second lesson again. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 22 verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The first injunction. Having read the above excerpt, what has Jesus Christ enjoined you to do? Has he not enjoined you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind? This is what you have to inform everybody about. Hardly would you see anybody asking about what God expects of him, and what Christ enjoins all to practice. You would hold yourself responsible, and your blood would be on you, should you fail to practice this injunction. The injunction given in this sermon by Christ constitutes the first and foremost commandment. It is the injunction that constitutes our joy, truth and love. Should we practice this gospel, we would see the reward instantly. Whoever fails to see such reward should know that he has not practiced this injunction. Should anyone fail to behold God, it means that he has not loved him with all his heart, soul and mind. Loving God with all your heart. If peace eludes you it means you do not love him with all your heart, mind and soul. 
If you find yourself in an adverse situation then know that you do not love him with all your heart, mind and soul. When Christ told his disciples that he was going to Bethany, they asked why he should go back to where they sought to stone him, so he answered them and said, Are not twelve hours in the day? If any man walketh by day he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. John chapter 11 verse 9. If you should love God with all your heart, mind and soul, you would never encounter any kind of problem. You would never see, nor come across anything evil. All you will see will be the Father, and you would only talk about the Father at all times. Christ was always calling on the Father, referring to him at all times. You can neither see the Father nor talk about him for now, because you do not love him with all your mind, heart and soul. Can you now see the reason why when Christ attended the feast with his parents at Jerusalem and after the feast, the parents did not see him for two days, when the parents came back and saw him, he asked them, what was their business with him? He further asked them, whether he should not abide in his father's house. If you love God with all your heart, mind and soul, you would never encounter any problem, nor see anything evil. It is only the father that would completely occupy your thought. With this type of love you will never be annoyed. It is only the Father that wills everything in your life. This is the reason why Christ warned love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. The main theme of this sermon and others to come shall be centered on how to love your God with all your heart, mind and soul. It was because of the lack of this love that Christ reminded the people thus, Matthew chapter 15 verse 8, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouths, and honor of me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Search yourselves, because, most of you only profess to love God with your lips, but your hearts are far from him. Since he does not wish that we should perish, this is the reason why he has seen it necessary to deliver this message to us, so that we would go back to that first love. I feel that God loves us so much that he would not want us to perish. This is the reason why he has given us this gospel at this eleventh hour, so that we would not forget these facts. It is written, Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. Today has really proved the fact that God's love for us is so great and so unfathomable. It is said, though you bestow all your wealth to feed the poor and give your body to be burned, if you fail to love your God with all your heart, mind and soul, it avails you nothing. Whether you have money or not, whether you are beautiful or not, educated or not, these things are not important. All God needs from you is to love him with all your heart, mind and soul, and you will behold him. He will dwell in you and take control of your life. You will not even need food, money or any carnal thing apart from the Father. Remember that Moses had said that, when the time comes, God shall raise a prophet amongst you, whom you all should listen to. And that whoever shall not listen to his voice shall be cut off from the face of the earth. Acts chapter 3 verses 22-23. If somebody should ask you the reason why we are faced with problems, the simple answer is that we have refused to listen to the voice of God, the grace of God. If the people of the world should seek for the solution to all the problems plaguing them, you should advise them to start to love God with all their heart, mind and soul. This is therefore, the grace and the truth. The reason why you keep talking about man, juju, ghost, mermaid, which and apparition is because you do not love God with all your heart, mind and soul. Whoever loves God talks only about God and sees God at all times. Such a person can never indulge in sinfulness because his testimonies are always centered on God. If somebody should come and invite you to Jerusalem or to the desert to see God, do not go, for God can never be found in those places. He dwells in you. If you love God with all your mind, heart and soul, you will see him. Also worldly things will never torment you. You would never experience famine or darkness in your life. Christ had said that, Blessed is he whose heart is pure, for he shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Little did we know that the statement consists of salvation and grace of God. It is also the life and glory of God. The statement is nothing but the truth and is trustworthy. 
The moment you love your God with all you, heart, mind and soul, you have been completely separated from the world. You would have nothing to do with any other thing apart from the Father. You would always testify of the Father alone. I thank the Father so much, because he does not wish that the world should perish. For this reason, he has given this package, and has reminded us of the things we had forgotten about. The Father in his infinite mercy shall continue to remind you of this from time to time, to love your God with all your heart, mind and soul. Put your trust in him. You should practice this love and devote your entire heart into a loving your God at all times. You should accept him fully. Let the golden text be read. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Surrender your heart. Do not ask questions. Do not doubt or argue with him. Put these words into practice, and you will surely see a change in your life. You would no longer talk about any other worldly things, for you would talk about the Father alone. It is said that he who is heavenly speaks of the heavenly things only. When you get to that state it means you are in heaven. It is said that, we err in everything but whosoever bridles his tongue is perfect. James chapter 3 verse 2. Who is that person who does not err with what he speaks? It is he who loves God with all his mind, heart and soul. If you love God with your mind, heart and soul, you would never quarrel, fight or see evil. You would neither see the day nor night, you would only see the Father in all things, and as the one doing all things. All the money in this world would be nothing before you. You would never see any woman, man, dresses and other worldly thing. All that you would see would be the Father. This is also the reason why it is said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2 If you want to know more, then start practicing this gospel, and teach others in the world to practice same. By so doing, you would discover that the kingdom of God is here with you. Since it is not too late to mend your ways, you should start to love your God with all your heart, mind and soul. The moment you practice these words you are free. An illustration. Suppose a large house is built to house a group of women, and it is fenced around to prevent the women from being corrupt. And suppose also that another building is set up in, say, a distance of 300 miles apart, for men, also with fence, would that prevent the women from moving to and from, where the men are confined? Have you not gone into the river to search for fish, no matter the depth of the sea? It is said that, where your treasure is there also is your heart. When you say that money, women and other material things are the cause of all the problems in the world, I refuse to accept it. The cause of all the problems in the world is that, man does not love God with all his heart, mind and soul, and there is no love of God in your heart. Whoever loves God with all his heart, mind and soul can never be birthed by fire. He can never see death or apparition. He would never see anything evil, no matter where he finds himself. And to such a person, money would be nothing, but he would only see God and the things of God. You are all aware of the fact that I have no regard for the world. I do not even see anything apart in the Father. Now you are happy and this happiness has been extended to the whole world. Right from now, I want you to put these words into practice. May the Father bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father, 